The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. Have fishing on the table tonight, Duke. Yeah, my mouth's watered already. <laughs> <laughs> there was just your taste tube to acting up. <laughs> sure gonna be great to be able to go hunting whenever we want to, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, even the air smells better when there ain't no game warden. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some other folks heard about Joe Norton retiring, too. Yeah, I never did cotton to them hunt laws anyways. If a man gets, gets hungry, he should be allowed to go out and shoot his half a meal. Yeah, after all, them woods is, is nature's restaurants, you know. Hey, you know what I heard once, Grandpa? At them fancy cafeterias in New York, they get $7 for serving pheasant under glass. Yeah? Well, I guess glass must run high in New York. <laughs> I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the state of California. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the state of California. Sign here. George McMichael, you are now officially a deputy game warden of the state of California. Hot dog. <laughs> Could I have the badge now? Oh. Yeah, here it is. Thank you. Looks mighty good, huh? Just can't wait till I show it to my good friend, Amos McCoy. Well, you got plenty to do. Since Joe Norton resigned, there's been a lot of out-of-season hunting going on. I'll fix that soon enough. <laughs> Hang on, you poor little feathered creatures. George McMichael is on the way. <laughs> Hey, look, oh. you sure must have bird dog eyes. I didn't see that pheasant flesh. Yeah, well, you taught me, Grandpa. Sure is a beauty, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, in the name of the Constitution of the United States and the state of California. Oh, Mr. Hey, Amos and Brooke. Oh, Why, it's what? George. George! <laughs> oh, for a minute there, we thought sure you was the game warden. You sure scared us? I'm still a chicken. Where'd you get that whistle with a new suit? <laughs> no, I didn't. This here's a real whistle, issued to me by the state of California. Yeah, well, it's a lucky thing you run into us, George. We got a little treat for you. We got us an extra bird to make a nice meal for you. I'll take it. <laughs> but right, I ought to take them other shoe and the gun. <laughs> That's what the book calls the confiscation. <laughs> what are you jawing about? I'm the new deputy game warden in this area, Amos. Took Joe Norton's job. That's how come the whistle and the badge. Ah, oh, you're fooling me, an old poacher like you. Why, you got that badge in a box of Cracky Jack. <laughs> that ain't no Cracky Jack badge, Grandpa. It says right on there, game warden. My best friend of bird revenue. <laughs> I just can't believe it. When did all this happen, George? This morning. I took the oath of office and everything. Somebody had to do the job. It's only weekends. And pays $40 a month. A bird revenue. George, I, I don't know what to say. You you caught us red-handed. Yeah, 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 I did. But, uh, well, let's forget I caught you this time, huh? Doggone it, I don't like going around resting my friends and finding them. Well, now you sound more like the old George McMichael. <laughs> we got us a warden, but he's on our side. Now, just a minute, Amos. I'm your friend, all right, but I, I still got to uphold the law. Oh, sure you do, sure you do, George. Yeah, then uh, i tell you what we'll do. Now, if you was to give them birds to charity, like, say, uh, well, like the old folks home in town, then I wouldn't find you. You see, according to the book... I can't prosecute without supporting evidence. Well, whatever you say, George. Well, listen to them dirty poachers. Go get them, George. <laughs> Come on for Jackie's tonight. I'll do that, Amos. Well, I guess we better get into town with these birds. Into town, my foot. 
You heard what George said. Oh, that's just George putting out a little of that badge talk. That's for other folks. He don't mean us. He ain't gonna do nothing to us. We're friends. Well, he seemed mighty serious about it. Oh, he's got to act that way. Son, you just don't understand about politics. Well, come on, let's get these cooked up for them old folks at our home. What old folks at our home? Me! <laughs> I have an awful lot of homework to do. May I be excused? Oh, yes, you may, Hassie. Thank you. I'm going to go, too. May I be excused? Sure, it's all right with me. <laughs> when is that boy ever going to learn any manners? <laughs> You two are eating like this with your last meal. Delicious. If I'd known you was going to eat like that, I would have roasted that other bird. You better put the other one in the oven, Kate, in case somebody gets up in the middle of the night and they's hungry, then it'll be all done, you see. And I know just who that somebody's going to be. She's got your number, Grandpa. But don't be surprised if somebody beats you to it. <laughs> we'll have it tomorrow. Hey, that would be George. Come on in, George. Right here, George. Howdy, Kate. Hi, George. Howdy, everybody. Oh, George, I heard about your new job. Congratulations. Thanks, Ed. Oh, I'm sure enjoying it. You know, I always wanted to be in on the legal end. Hey, George, set yourself down and take a load off me. Whistle. Come on. Oh, what? would you like a cup of coffee, George? Uh, no, thanks, Kate. You, uh, uh, how about some rice pudding? Thanks a lot, but no thanks. <laughs> sure smells good. It is good. Yeah. Try anyway. Well, I ain't hungry, you understand, but I'll just kind of let my teeth get the feel of it. Duck, a pheasant. I stuffed them with apple. Delicious, Kate, delicious. You know, when my sister Flora fixes them, she puts in carrots and celery and just a little bit of garlic to... Yes. No lips of mine shall ever set foot on an out of season bird. Now, George, don't pay him no mind. Look, that's the voice of the whistle talking. Oh, no, it ain't, Amos. It's the voice of Deputy Game Warden George McMichael talking. All right, Deputy Game Warden George McMichael, we see how good you are at checkies. Come on. I want to talk to you. That's all right. You can talk while we play checkies. You didn't tell me them was illegal birds. Well, I didn't think there's much about it worth telling. <laughs> and then you brought them home for me to cook after George warned you? Well, you see, sugar babe, me and Grandpa, we just thought that George was just kidding. Well, he don't sound like he's kidding to me. You shouldn't take advantage of a friend like that. You and Grandpa broke the law. Amos, will you take me serious? I mean it. I ain't now, playing checkers till we settle. Oh. I told you, just as plain as noon. I told you turn in them pheasant and I wouldn't find you. That's right you did, George. You told me nice and clear. Now, set yourself down. I'll give you a chance to get even checky-wise. As of last Tuesday, you owe me $8,450,000. You'll get your money. But right now, we're talking illegal hunting. All right, sure move. Doggone it, Amos. Will you take me serious? I mean it. If I find you with birds again, I'll find you, so help me. Oh, come on and play, George. You put on a big enough show for everybody. Come on now, play. Grandpa, I don't think George is putting on a show. He's talking straight out. Oh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I wouldn't want you to force me to give you a ticket in your own home. And the book says it's a $25 fine for each bird to catch you with. Oh, I'd like to see the day you give me a ticket. I'd sure like to see that day. <laughs> You would, huh? Yes, I would. Game warden. Why, if them birds out there know that you was a protecting them, I'll guarantee they'd laugh themselves right out from under the feathers. Hey, 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 Miss McCoy. You're showing disrespect to both of us. Me, and what's more important, the sovereign state of California. Oh, what's he writing, Luke? He's writing a ticket. Thought I was bluffing, huh? Read that. You can't give me no ticket. I can't read. Oh, wait a Grandpa, we've been fined $25. $25? You mean to tell me you're fining me $25 right in the middle of my hospitality? You made me do it, Amos. I didn't want to. 
What a fine friend you turned out to be. Well, I'll tell you, we ain't a paying it. Huh? You ain't got no choice. <laughs> we got to pay it, Grandpa. It's the law. We ain't got to pay it. And I'll tell you why. It's what you said in the field today. You got to have evidence. Evidence? And they ain't none. It's John Binet, and you have to eat it. <laughs> Why, golly, George, Grandpa's right. You said it yourself, right out of the book. You tricked me. That's what you did. You didn't have to eat the drumstick of that there pheasant. You was offered rice pudding. But no, no, look, you just take this and you roll it up good and tight, and you use it to clean out your whistle. <laughs> A deputy game warden in the performance of duty should always remain calm and under control at all times. <laughs> if it weren't for that rule, Amos, I'd tell you straight to your face that you are the honoriest, no account, backstabbing, advantage taken, miserablest <laughs> of Adams. Here you are, George. If I'd known they was illegal, I never would have cooked the other two. That did it. Get that bird out of here. I got it. God darn women, why don't they stay in the kitchen where they belong? Well, how is she to know, Grandpa? Grandpa, we've got to stay in straight with the law. How much is the fine, George? Twenty-five dollars. Uh, but I'm fine and nameless, not you, Kate. I'll take it out of the cookie jar. But sugar babe, that money in the cookie jar is for your new winter coat. Now, wait a minute. My old coat will do just fine. Give it a look, Grandpa. Maybe if you was to apologize, George would forget about it. I ain't apologizing to him for nothing. Well, you forget when things was tough, how I stuck to you. Two years ago, when the barbershop burned down, who was it cut your hair? <laughs> me, Amos McCoy. And then when you was in the hospital sick and lonesome, you asked me to bring over my checkies. I walked two miles through the pouring rain. What did I get out of that? Nothing but the sniffles and a, and a soggy checky board. <laughs> I ain't the type to forget favors, but that ain't call. the point. Sorry about the coat, Kate, but you know my position. I took a note. Now, there's your money. Now, get. And you ain't heard the last of this. And let this be a warning to you, Warden McMichael. You're going to be sorry you ever took that job. I'm going to make your life so miserable, you're going to wish you never pinned that badge on. And before I get through with you, you snake-eyed... Hot-bellied, whistle-blowing windbag. You want to be a high-tailed out of the country just to scream it for mercy. I just got one thing to say. You got a lot to learn about being a host. you in the act. I'll relieve you of your shotgun, sir. Give me that gun, Amos. You caught me all right, but the judge is going to be mighty happy to get a shotgun like this. You can't hardly get that kind no more. <laughs> Why, you... I ought to take that room and make it in order. Don't forget, the deputy warden of the state of California in performance of his duty is supposed to be calm and collected. Section 7, uh, number whatever it was. <laughs> Standing here talking to you, Mr. McCoy, is wasting the government's time. And the taxpayers expect me to patrol my area. I'll bid you good day. Bang! Bang! I got you. I got you. I guess you did, Warden. You got me with the goods this time. Now, don't say I didn't warn you, Amos. You've been asking for trouble. Hand over that bag. Hand it over. Don't you understand, Amos? These laws are made for the protection of our wildlife. <laughs> These little kitchens got to be protected out of season. <laughs> Taking an oath. 
I'm taking it right in front of you. Next time I catch you, I'll catch you good. And it ain't going to be so funny when you're in front of the judge. <laughs> California. I got you. I got you dead to right, Sabres. Give me that gun. Well, you dirty low down sneak. You've been a sneaking around following me every place, ain't you? You ain't been out of my sight for a minute. Your gun, sir. And the bag. Hollering the men all around. Just a minute. You ain't making a fool out of me this time. I just want to make sure it ain't carrots. That's a bird, all right. Amos, you and me and the bird is going cold. <laughs> Get in. Hello, Judge. I didn't expect to see you here, Amos. Good afternoon, Judge. Harry, uh, I mean, Judge, uh, you ain't going to be so friendly to him when you hear what he did. Mm, looks like the law has come between a couple of friends. He ain't no friend of mine. And he ain't no friend of mine either. <laughs> Tried to be friends with him, give him lots of warnings, but no. He insisted on making a fool out of me in the state of California. Amos admitted you were asking to be taught a lesson. Oh, get on with it. Well, sir, I've got his gun and the evidence. Amos McCoy's been shooting birds illegally. Now, let's see. We have the evidence, Exhibit A, the gun, and the bird in question, Warden. Right here. kind of funny. Don't you think he's kind of funny? I don't think it's funny at all. Poor Mr. McMichael. He must have been humiliated. What a fine family I got. I go to all kinds of trouble to uphold the McCoy tradition of revenge. And what do you do? It's Mr. McMichael. Well, if it's a fight he wants, he's come to the right place. <laughs> Simmer down, Grandpa. Ain't you done enough damage already? The man's your best friend. Hessie, little Luke, you come with me. There may be some words thrown around I don't want you to know just yet. <laughs> Maybe I better stick around in here so I can learn what not to say. Out, out, out. All right, the children can hear you. Go ahead and say it. Hey, miss, uh, come to apologize. I ain't. You come to what? I've been doing quite a bit of thinking, and I come to apologize. That's a trap, ain't it? No, it ain't a trap, Amos. Just want to tell you that I'm sorry for what I did to you and yours. I'm sorry. You come to think on it, there ain't no need for you to apologize to me anyways. Oh, yes, there is. It's only right, Amos. Maybe I was wrong with Sam. No, no, it was me. You accusing me of lying? I was in the wrong. No, you wasn't. I was in the wrong. God end. darn it, it was me. You was doing the job. No, sir. I shouldn't have treated you the way I did. You had every reason to treat me the way you done. I shouldn't have done, took advantage of your friendship. Famous. Uh, after all, uh, what are friends for, huh? What do you mean, George? Anyways, uh... I, I felt I was wrong for the job, so I resigned. 
turned in my badge and my whistle. Well, uh, I'm sure you done that. Oh, I ain't. I wasn't cut out for a day, Miss. <laughs> oh, yes, you was. You was good at it. You know, deep down inside of me, I was, well, I was just kind of proud I know you. You was a fine game warden, George, and that ain't nothing to be ashamed of. No, Amos, no. I, I never had any real talent for wrestling. Yeah, and besides, I kept forgetting what to say, and I fell down a couple of times. <laughs> right in my bed once, I tore my shirt, and... No, no. Uh, I wasn't right for the job, Amos. <laughs> yeah. It's all gone by now, George. How about a little game of checkies? <laughs> I like that, Amos. again with you, George. Sure is, Amos. And just think, four days ago I was out in the fields trying to put an end to all this good living. Yeah, we don't need no warden around here. We ain't greedy. We only take one apiece. Yeah. Um, like my new coat, Grandpa? Gee, it's a new coat. It's a doozy. It's a beauty, Kate. Yeah. Where'd you get the money? I gave it to her. I took the deputy warden's job this morning. Forty dollars a month. What? That's right, Grandpa. He took the oath and everything. George, is your address 304-305? Now, look, I'm your Grandpa George and your good friend. You can't sign on... Now, hold, hold on, hold on, Grandpa. I ain't writing out citations for you. I'm making out hunting licenses for both of you. Pheasant season open today. And these birds are legal. That's right. Legal birds? Ah, ain't gonna chase you. <laughs> 